things like, you know, UFOs, being abducted by UFOs, things like, oh, the Holy Ghost talks to me. Uh, these are all works of the jinns. They're just newer forms of how they're working. Hmm. And, you know, what happens is that every culture has its monsters, right? Every culture, somebody has a, a Dracula, some, you know, like in the Indian subcontinent, they have the concept of the Jurel, which is a female with her, uh, the Pakistani, you know. They don't know it's a jinn, they don't, because they think, oh, it's something separate from a jinn, but it's not. It's like a Jurel, it's this thing with her, her feet are backward and it's a female and, you know, she's supposed to be some sort of evil thing. Anyway, so, you know, people see these werewolves or they see these Bigfoots and they see these Chureans and they see these things that they believe are monsters out there. And these are all the works of jinns, but particularly what I wanted to talk more about is that that in becoming esoteric and becoming, oh, you know, I want to get close to God, I want to get close to God, and then you want to hear something special. You know, you want to hear something from the divine. Uh, and uh, instead of instead of thinking it's a jinn, it's something evil, you start thinking it must be something good, something powerful. I'll give you an example myself. Uh, when I was in Egypt, uh, obviously you're in an, in an Islamic environment. You're in, we were in both in Medina, it's a, Medina to Baruch, where is the hostel where the kids are. And uh, one day, I, I got up for the hundred prayers. And uh, because you're in that environment, I mean, bring Hajj in that environment is not, you know, if you're working eight to five and then you bring Hajj, that might be, you know, something more. But, uh, but the environment we were in, that's not a big deal. Uh, anyway, so I happened to be, uh, we had our own rooms, but that day because of studying or something, I don't remember right now, or because we were eating together, we just, me and my best friend, he was from Australia. We went to sleep in the same, his, I think it was his room. Uh, and so I went to do wudu, and when I came back, I was praying in the middle of my prayer, like the first raka. And in the process of my prayer, I felt this fear, like my hairs of my body stood up. Like you can tell, like your body is telling you something is there. But you can't see it. I mean, first of all, you're in prayer, you can't see it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that happened. I quickly prayed, and it was going to be Fajr a few minutes later anyway, so I just went about my day. After Fajr prayer, Zerli was his name. Zerli comes to me and says, You know, last night when you were praying, I saw something behind you. Something behind you. And I said, He said it was white. It was good. So I was like, oh, Okay, it was good. So I went to another sheikh, and I asked him, this thing happened, and Zerli says he saws this thing. He said, oh, no, no, it's not an angel. It is one of the wali of Allah's, one of the friends of Allah's, they are uh, protecting you. One of the saints who have died who are close to Allah. It must be one of them protecting you. And this is a, a very big thing. Then I went to another sheikh, and I said, uh, this happened, what do you think? He said, oh, must be one of the evil shaykhs. They don't want you to pray to Hajj. They don't want you to be getting closer to Allah, so they wanted to scare you. The shayateen were trying to just either make you feel like, oh, this is such a big thing that happened to you, or, uh, or and Imam Nathamia writes about this, for example, he says, in one of his books, he says that a jinn will come to a uh, somebody who wants to get closer to Allah, will say to him, do sujood to me, I will take you to Makkah to pray. Right? You will be so close to Allah, you will you will get to pray in the haram. From here, I will take you here and you will pray there. Everybody else in your town prays here, you'll be praying in Makkah. So the point is, is that shayateen have these tricks. You know, that, that they're always, especially students of knowledge, you know, they're, they're like prime target almost, right? Mm -hmm. Because even the Quran says that the shaytan says, I will sit on the straight path. That's the path that he will sit down. I will sit on the straight path. So anyway, um, so, uh, yeah, UFOs, and then in reference to the future, uh, just as some Sufi sheikhs think that they got closer to Allah because now all of a sudden they're hearing these voices, people will even say, this is, not, this is my sheikh who's in the grave talking to me 
through. Have you heard this? Mm -hmm. Have you heard? I have personally heard this. This is not coming from me. The Sheikh will say this is not coming from me. This is coming from my Sheikh, who has already passed away. And then he's giving the lecture as if he's translating from his Sheikh. People don't realize that this is just a big trick of Shaytan. Mm. And so anyway, moving on, but we are living in times where, uh, how do I put it? You know, we are living in times where the deception is going to get even more tricky. You know, that's what Dajjal means, Dajjal. And there's not going to be one Dajjal, there will be many Dajjals. We're only worried about the one big Dajjal. Of course, we have to be worried about him, but there's many <coughs> in the process. And uh, so we live in times where these shayateen, they have become bold now. That Islam has come down. Muslim scholars, they, these shayateen, they mock them. They say, oh, these, these people, their recitation does nothing to us now. Their adhan doesn't make us run away now. Hmm. You know, so... Uh, anyway, that's a separate issue, but um, but they've become bold, and now they are really uh, getting there. Like a lot of these people that do suicide, for example, even 9/11, for example. One of the things, one of the thoughts, and that has come to my mind is that maybe Shaytan possessed these people to do this, to give Islam a bad name, because these people they were drunk. I mean, I can tell you a story about that, and. Uh, taking out jinns one day. Uh, but the Qur'an says about being drunk, إِنَّهُ مِنْ عَمَلُ الشَّيْطَانِ that this is amongst the works of shaitan. When you drink, your mind is open to their... Because this is another thing. When you do drugs, when you do alcohol, your mind is open to that. Just like when a psychologist does hypnosis on someone. When he does hypnosis on... You know, part, part of hypnosis is you have to give yourself into the psychologist completely and 100%. Okay, and they even there's um, there's this thing called uh, uh, transformational psychology, in which even Christian Christian missionaries, I mean not missionaries, Christian psychologists even now are beginning to find <coughs> out there is um, a technical term for this, but but even people with mental diseases, for example, I'll give you an example. Schizophrenia, multiple personality. How does somebody get multiple personality? Your IQ changes, the dilution of your eyes change, your personality. There was, there is. This is like not. This is not science fiction. This is real. There was a girl. She had 16 different personalities with different IQs. Even I have seen cases where they have different. They're speaking different languages, and they don't realize this. But this is all the work of the shayateen and the jinns that are possessing these people and getting them to do all these crazy things. One of the places that uh, there was a, uh, I won't name the sheikh right now, but uh, there was a sheikh, very popular. He went to a mental hospital. Uh, in fact, uh, I mean Sheikh Urayi, you know Sheikh Urayi? Sheikh Urayi is, a, he's a, is one of the great reciters of Quran from Saudi. He lives here in Maryland. I think he still lives here. But he was telling me that in the mental hospital, of Medina, when they started reciting Quran on a regular basis, 30% of the people got cured. That meant that 30% of those people were being affected by the shayateen and the jinns, where they're hearing things and they're seeing things. This is only the work of shaitan. Mm -hmm. And even like, I mean, I can go into, into this whole psychology aspect of it, because a lot of these crazy things happen when they hear something. You know, I heard, I, I heard him say this to me, so I killed her. You'll hear this all the time. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, shaitan is very much part of our life. Everything from, I, I hear, and oh, the fastest religion growing right now in America is uh, Wicca. You know what Wicca is? Witchcraft. Mm. There's a big change in America. Islam was the fastest growing religion in America in the 60s, where two million people accepted Islam. Uh, you know, not out of a philosophic, African Americans didn't accept Islam out of a philosophical request. It was out of the sense of justice. That was, that sense of justice is what got them attached to Islam. And that Islam provided for that justice, at least intellectually. And so anyway, and then part of the other, there's other parts too. Some of it has to do with the roots going back to Islam. There's some of that too, but majority of it is the sense of justice. Anyway, 
But what I'm trying to come to is, today the fastest growing religion in America is Wicca. You go to any bookstore, there's a whole section called the New Age. You've mm -hmm. heard of that? Mm -hmm. The New Age is all magic. It's all magic. It's all about getting in touch. Look, in the 80s, this astrology stuff was not even a, wasn't even an industry in America. No one believed in ghosts or trying to connect with spirits and this and that and the tarot cards and all of that. This is a recent phenomenon that started since the 1990s in the U.S. and now is a billion dollar industry. And so all that industry has brought all these, has activated the jinns in, in America particularly and uh, activated the work of shaitan, so to say, because shaitan most works most successfully through, through idolatry. You know, the, 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 the idolatry is, there, there's an explanation for that, which I won't give today, but there's a reason why shape. There's a story, for example, of when the Prophet ﷺ conquered Mecca, and he told Ali that go ahead, break that idol. And when he broke that idol, there was this ugly uh, lady that came out of it. And then Ali killed that, and the Prophet said that was the real idol, meaning the jinn behind it. And so, so, the, you know, even the same thing with pictures. The main, one of the main reasons that, and Allah may have more wisdom besides what I know, but definitely, definitely, hanging pictures on walls uh, is a major thing that allows the shayateen to take effect in the house. I mean, I, I will tell you that it's so much difference that if you're reading Quran in a room with even small dolls laying around, your Quran will not be effect as effective as if you tell the house person, remove these dolls, remove these pictures, and then you recite Quran, it's ten times more effective. So there's how it benefits them, I'm not 100% sure, but I do know it strengthens them, gives them power, some of that physical uh, thing about the picture, something about the picture helps them be. And uh, anyway, so moving on. But we do live in times where, you know, shaitan have become very, very active and people are hearing more and more. There's, there's studies in psychology that show up to 10 people, 10% 10 of the people hear things now. And about Wicca, I was going to say that one of the things happens in witchcraft, this is how it starts. There, one of the main things happens is you do your Reiki. You've heard of Reiki? Mm. You do your Reiki. You know in Reiki, you make a wish and you tie a knot and you blow on it. You ever seen that? You ever heard of this? I found this out recently. They actually make knots and they tie on it. But one of the things about Reiki, people that do Reiki, they believe in, I have a guardian angel that talks to me. I have a guardian angel that talks to me. And that guardian angel is not their guardian angel. I mean, it's just, it's just shape on just advising them and then uh, you know and then they it tells them what to think about all of their house members and so on and so forth but this is becoming very popular now this whole Reiki thing this whole Wicca thing it's becoming super super popular the other thing that's always been there but you know it's 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 not decreasing it's, it's if not anything it's getting more popular is the whole Ouija board thing there's no dead spirits that come to talk to you. If when you summon, and this is a very important key word because the magicians I've talked to that have done toba, the magicians who used to do magic and then they did toba, this is what they say that the key of it is you have to summon them. They can't, they don't, they're not going to respond to you unless you're calling for their help. And this is what Quran mentions. There, there would be the men amongst the human beings that would seek the refuge of the men amongst the jinn. This is in Quran. So anyway, uh, so this thing is very dangerous for our families and for all of us. And, and the thing is, is that magic is becoming popular even to the degree that the Prophet said that people would go back into idol worship. Like, like Islam would go back to the way it originally was. Idol, and I have heard, and I am hearing from many sources, that idolatry and magic are coming back into Southern India now as we speak. And so, anyway, it's, it's there. And there, the type of magic that people are doing in Arabia is bizarre. I mean, 
bizarre, bizarre. I mean, I don't want to go into that, but <coughs> there was, you know, anyway, so yeah, I'll just end there.